damage is um, three thousand six thirty nine forty. Okay. And then five hundred dollars for an admin fee. Got it. And then one thousand ninety three fifty four for diminished value. Okay. And then two hundred and nine dollars ninety four cents for the uh, loss of use. Okay. Look at that beautiful view. <laughs> Good morning, fam. I am so happy. I'm in a wonderful mood because today, finally, I am packing my bags and preparing to board a plane to start my Christmas adventures and you guys are coming with. Uh, so there is no confusion. It's going to be an in-state trip in the United States next year. First thing next year, 2024, we go overseas. So this is our last trip before we leave the country. I'm super, super happy and I'm hoping I can bring you guys a wonderful Christmas experience, Christmas experience with me because I'm happy for this trip. I've been planning it for a while. But let's get down to business before we get down to pleasure. I know you guys heard that audio in the beginning of this video. You saw the clips of the SUV that I drove when I stayed in Tennessee and it was pretty banged up uh, from behind. I've already talked to my Patreons. They already know the story, how much I paid, all of that stuff. So now it's time to bring it to you guys. The claim is done, everything is wrapped up, and I'm gonna tell you my story, the big mistakes I've made, the questions I didn't ask my insurance company, and because I didn't know these questions, this simple accident cost me a lot of money. And I wanna tell my story because I want you guys to be better prepared than I was. Uh, I didn't have anybody when I started my van life journey. I didn't know the questions asked. I didn't have any friends or family that did RVing. I didn't know anything. It's over, it's done, I'm happy, and it's a mistake I'll never make again. But we will talk about uh, what happened, how much I had to pay, why I had to pay, why I wasn't covered later on in this video. But first, we have a jam-packed day. Yes, take it in. <sighs> I slept in a Walmart parking lot last night, but I woke up early this morning before the sunrise, and I didn't want to do another sunrise in a Walmart parking lot. Don't get me wrong, Walmart, I love you. You've had my back since my van life journey. You're amazing. But I did not want to catch another Walmart sunrise. So I caught a sunrise over looking this beautiful canyon and it was just amazing. Um, but now it's time to get the day started. I got to get a shower. I got to do laundry. I got to wash the van. I got to pack. Uh, so before I get started, I don't ever promote myself. I, I suck at promoting myself, but I do have a Patreon. Um, I go live over there. I post exclusive content and we have a really good community over there. If you guys want to go live often and hang out with us on Patreon, see exclusive content, um, I do have a link to my Patreon. It's in the about section of this YouTube channel. I will also post a link in the pinned comments of this video. All right. Let's prepare for our Christmas festivities. <sighs> Don't come for me, okay? This is what a minimalistic Christmas looks like. I know you, my Patreons, they was going in on me about my band. They're like, this is all you got to decorate? Look, we were on live. I showed them. I was happy. And they were like, no, no, no. No, me, this ain't cutting it. But this is a minimalistic Christmas. This this is what minimalist, minimal, a minimalistic Christmas looks like. So... I'm happy with it. I'm wearing it. We got the lights going. Let's shut the door so you can see. Look at this. The lights are flashing. Look, this Christmas is gonna be a lot of fun. So with that being said, this video is the start of our Christmas series. Step one, let's pack our bags and prepare to leave. <laughs>
So I don't always have the luxury of going to a Planet Fitness or even a gym to take a shower. Uh, in this town, the only gym they have, you have to pay to use if you're not a membership member and you don't, they don't even have uh, a shower. So I am at a local campground to get a shower and the cost to shower here is $5.50. First, I'm gonna get my bag. I normally exit out from the side door, but with this area, I like to exit out um, from the driver's side door. Got my backpack already prepared with my shower stuff in here and I'm wearing my shower sandals. Oh, let's go. Well, you know what? Let's just exit out at the side. That's fine. Today, it's just a little more convenient for me. And I'm actually parked in a camping spot, but I'm not gonna be that long for my shower. Got this towel here to prevent the air from coming in at night. And I do need to sweep my floor bad. in it I make sure and uh, it's not bad I mean for 550 but look at the shower heads it's like I'm getting a rust shower and they only got like one of those and then the shower head so we'll start the water why I let it warm up wow we got wet finally finished with my laundry <laughs> uh, I didn't really I didn't fold any of it it's right there <laughs> oh Lord help me and then I got a big bag of stuff up under there so I gotta get that together but <sighs> I think the I rather do dishes every day than do laundry I don't mind doing laundry but I think the worst part about laundry is that you have to fold it I wish I could just stuff it all in a drawer So I'm not staying here, but this is just kind of a cool place to uh, chill and hang out. It's got beautiful views, of course. This is the street view, but the real beauty is behind you guys. But um, I'm gonna put this laundry up. But got everything I wanted to get done today. Washed, uh, took a shower. Uh, well, took a rust shower. Let me stop. I'm grateful for whatever shower I can get. Took a shower, washed my baby, and swept it out. Did my laundry. And now, we're going to put these clothes up. And then, uh, I'm going to tell you guys a little story. A costly story. 
story time. Uh, let's get started. So from the, for, for those of you who have been following me for a long time, you'll remember when I went to Tennessee and rented an SUV to stay in while I stayed in Tennessee as opposed to getting a hotel. Um, I rented that SUV online. Um, and this is all my fault because I didn't read the fine print. I didn't read anything that was popping up on the screen. I was Xing, X, hitting the X button on everything because I just wanted to pay and exit out. In hindsight, I wish I would have read all of the pop-ups on the screen that they were showing me because I would have realized they were more than likely offering me additional coverage. <laughs> so I rented the vehicle, no insurance. And besides, in my puny little mind, I was thinking, it doesn't matter because I have full coverage on the RV. If something happens to the SUV, my full coverage should cover the damage to the SUV. That's what I was thinking. So fast forward, um, I was in Tennessee. The last three days that I was in Tennessee, I wasn't getting any sleep. The temperatures had dropped and I was extremely cold. I wasn't prepared. And so fast forward to the time it, it was time for me to drop off my vehicle. I go to the airport to drop off my vehicle. I'm operating on probably a minimum of two hours of sleep. For the last three days of my stay in Tennessee, I was sleeping between two and three hours, if that. Interrupted, up, sleep, interrupted, wake up, go to bed, wake up, go to bed, because it was just so cold. So I'm in the airport, tired, trying to beat, trying to make my drop-off time, because I picked an early time. I don't know why I did that. And... I went to make, I saw the, the area where I needed to drop off my, the SUV. I went to make a left, but I went down the wrong way. So I had to back up. There was no other way, but there was cars coming towards me. They stopped. They saw I needed to. And uh, so I just, I felt rushed and that was on me because those cars, they weren't rushing me. It was just all on me. I'm rushing myself, right? So I put the car in reverse and I'm not looking in my rearview mirror at this point because I'm rushed. And I hit the gas. I like hit it. And I, when I backed up, I went right into a wall. I'm like, got to be kidding me. So there was damage to the back of the SUV, needless to say. So I go take it, park it, got to fill out a claim. And I'm thinking I'm good because for one or two reasons. One, I'm thinking maybe, you know, insurance comes with the SUV. And I'm thinking that if it doesn't, which that didn't even cross my mind because I just thought it came with the package, but I also had a backup. I could use my full coverage on my RV. My RV's full coverage. Wrong. I talked to the manager and he's helping me and he's like, I'm, not, I'm like, am I, you know, I should be good, right? The, 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 the SUV comes with insurance, right? He's like, no. He's like, uh, they... You should have, what did you, how did you get the SUV? How did you rent it? I said, I threw a third party online. He goes, well, they should have offered it to you. Did they offer you additional coverage? And I'm like, I don't know. Honestly, I didn't because I didn't read anything. I was just hitting, Xing out everything, just trying to get to the end, like an idiot. And then he's like, well, the place that you rented the vehicle from, you know, the day that you went to go pick up the keys, did they offer you insurance? And I couldn't recall. I'm like, I don't, I don't remember. I don't think so. Um, I, I couldn't remember. I was just like, I don't know. He's like, well, let me see your receipt. He looked at my receipt and he's like, uh, no, you don't have additional coverage on this vehicle. I was like, okay. So when he said that, I'm like, all right, I got full coverage on my RV. I, I should be good. So I fill it out. I go, I call my insurance company. I fill out a claim. I let them know what happens. The claim agent calls me. I tell them what happens. And they said, I'm sorry, you should have read the fine print, which I should have. They said that your, in, your full coverage on your RV does not cover damage to a does not cover damage to a rental SUV. It would only cover damage if that SUV was an RV. Or if my RV was in the shop and I rented a vehicle, it would cover it. But because I'm renting it just for leisure, it, it didn't cover it. But she's like, I'm just 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 preparing you. She said, I'm gonna file your claim, and a claim like this has to go through two managers. So my claim went to two managers. They, they decided my fate. The first one, manager, denied my claim. The second one, denied my claim because again, I wasn't driving an RV and my RV wasn't in the shop for any reason. It wasn't a, a rental based off that. So they, they, they denied it. Needless to say, I had to pay over five grand out of pocket. Now, this is all my fault. I'm not blaming 
anybody. I should have read the fine print. I should have read the fine print of the insurance policy that I had. I should have read the fine print online. But like I said, I'm not blaming anybody. It is all my fault. I didn't ask the right questions and I wasn't prepared. So moral of the story is know your insurance policy and what it covers. Um, I did read my insurance policy, but just to make sure it covered the basics, I didn't read in depth as far as you know, what happens if I get into an accident with another vehicle. It's all my fault. I did not cover my bases. Now, if I had this RV with my insurance company and additional car with my insurance company, uh, so if I had an RV and a car and that my insurance company was covering both, then they would have been like, oh, you're good. We can just use your car to cover the damage for the SUV. And the claim agent asked me, do you have a car, you know, with us? I'm like, no. She says, okay, well, you know, RV is not going to cover it, but we'll run it up the chain. And so that's my fault. I didn't have a car, but what am I going to do? Tow the car behind me? I, I, I don't want that. That's too much. But again, it's my fault. I didn't have a car. I didn't read the fine print. I didn't do my research. And I was very just naive going into everything. But uh, thank God. And thankfully, I was able to just take care of it. Um and uh, close out the claim and learned a very hard, valuable lesson. Time to pack. I would have packed sooner, but I was too busy changing my beautiful maroon hoodie that I just spilt my Rise energy drink all over the front. Don't ask. Don't ask me how. Don't ask me how. So it's back in my clean green hoodie that I was trying to preserve and pack. I'm going to pack this hoodie. I'll pack it tomorrow. But I, yeah, there's that. So let's pack and hopefully no other incidences. Okay. I already got my uh, undergarments in here at the bottom. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna need to pack after this is like toothbrush, toothpaste, stuff like that. But um, undergarments are in. Now we're gonna add the other stuff. Wow, and there's still a lot of space. Wow, I can still fit my stuff in here. Still got all of this. I'll probably put like all of my toiletries and stuff in here. So it'll just go right in here, but that's it. And then I got what I'm gonna wear out. I already got that laid out. Uh, I'm gonna wear this black hoodie and then my black jeans and then got that so only thing that needs to go in here is my iPad and my personal hygiene stuff everything else is in here 
impressive. What? Okay. Not bad. Dang, look at that. And it's so light. Oh, and I forgot. I did have people ask me what's the name of this backpack because they didn't catch it on the last video. The name brand is right here up top. Hopefully y'all can see that. I'm going to be making a really boring meal. Uh, I did a long fast today. I just broke my fast at 29 hours and what was it 20 minutes uh, or 11 minutes, 29 hours and 11 minutes. I will put it up on the screen so you guys can see. And I don't want to eat too heavy. Um, and I don't really have any bone broth or anything. So I'm just going to make me some scrambled eggs uh, with a little bit of cheese uh, just to kind of ease back into eating. And uh, after I eat that, we'll, we'll see. But for now, I'm just going to do some scrambled eggs. All right. we go I did some um, scrambled eggs with a little whole milk and a little bit of cheese Whew. first bite goes to you oh man it's been a long day everything's done that's really good putting a little bit of whole milk in your eggs it makes it fluffier and it just tastes better. Been a long day. Um, the, the only reason why I'm taking that red bag, I don't know if I explained it to you guys, is because it is new and I just wanna test it out because that red bag is my overseas bag. Um, I am bringing a separate backpack for carry-on. I am flying Spirit uh, just for this trip. And with Spirit, I would take just a red bag because it's it's big enough to hold all of my electronics and clothes and stuff. But I don't know if it's going to fit in their little personal container holder. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't want to test the waters. But what I'll do is when I get to the airport, I will put that bag into the personal holder bag and see if it fits and then that'll that way I'll know for next time when I travel if I need a carry-on or not or in a dish if I need to do a carry-on if I could put everything in one bag but as a matter of fact it doesn't even matter because when I go overseas I'm gonna have two bags I'm gonna have a check-in and a carry-on I don't want just one bag I do want another bag for my personal items and stuff that I can keep on me and keep safe Mm. I forgot a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. How did I forget that? Oh, a lot of bit of pepper. I notice when I do long extended fast, when I do an extended fast, um, food just tastes better when I break my fast because it resets your taste buds as well. Mm-hmm. Mm. This is so good. Just, just eggs. I'm gonna eat something else maybe, uh, for sure. I did fast a long time, but I just wanna make sure my stomach is good to kind of take these eggs and I don't uh, do too much. You know, I would ideally like to drink like some broth or bone broth, but I don't have any of that. I don't know what I'm going to eat because I don't really have nothing. But we'll figure it out. With that being said, I think I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. I really hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me today. Like I always say, I enjoy your company. I enjoy the fact that you guys like to come along with me during my day. 
there was a lot going on today. It was really, really busy, but it made the day go by, you know, van life, you know, I know I've, I've gotten in my comments that you, you make van life look easy. It's, it, it, I do van life cause I enjoy it, but it, it's a lot of work. Uh, living on the road for me is a lot of work, but it's something that I enjoy doing. So I don't mind doing it. And when I mean a lot of work, it could be anything from finding a place to sleep to making sure your van is good. All of that stuff that comes with living on the road. I enjoy doing it, but it is a lot of work. If there's something you truly want to do, do your research, prepare, and do it. But, yeah, that's all I got to say on that. I appreciate you guys more than you know. Thank you so much for your continued support. It means the world to me. I'll always say this, and I'll continue to say this. I have the absolute best community on YouTube. You guys rock. You guys show up and you show out and that means so much to me. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. And as always, I will see you guys in my next video. Take care. Peace.